Sands, Senior Class President, and I would like to welcome you to our Connor High School Sponsored Veterans Day program. Hello, 
I am Eleanor Daniels, a senior at Connor High School. I'd like to share a quote on valor. Where life is more terrible than death, it is then the truest valor to live, by Thomas Brown. These brave men and women have the courage and valor to press on in life, even after all they have been through. State Senator John Schickel has served in the Kentucky State Senate since his election in 2008, representing Boone County. Senator Schickel previously served in law enforcement for 40 years as a Florence police officer, the elected Boone County Jailer, and U.S. Marshal. We would now like to welcome Senator John Schickel to say a few words. Senator Schickel. It's great to be here with you today to remember our veterans on Veterans Day. Connor High School has a reputation for this, and I know with COVID, uh, one or two years, we weren't able to have it, and I believe we did have it last year. But it's just great to be back here at Connor High School. One of the things I've gotten to do as your state senator is honor veterans around Boone County who made the ultimate sacrifice by naming roads after them. And I was telling your history teacher, John Moore, John, thank you for being a history teacher. I was telling John coming in, history, folks, is one of the very most important subjects you'll ever study, especially American history. It's short to change today, but I can tell you, over my career, learning history probably has benefited me more than any subject I've ever studied. Because we were, as I was discussing with your history teacher, there's no new problems. They just keep recycling situations, keep recycling. So students study your history. But getting back to our veterans, one of the things I've noticed is, is people from small towns, Petersburg, Bellevue, Hebron, they have paid a disproportionate sacrifice for our freedom. If you look at the people that were killed during our recent war in Vietnam, they are mostly, mostly folks, people like your dads, uncles, and grandfathers from small towns like Petersburg, Bellevue, and Hebrew. Let's give them all our veterans a round of applause. I want to thank the teacher, and I'm afraid to say her name, for Laura, for putting this together. Laura, I'm afraid to say your last name. You don't get to it. How do you say it? Mosqueda. Laura Mosqueda. Let's give her a round. May God bless our students, and most important, may God bless our veterans. And now we will have a performance by the Connor Symphony Orchestra under the direction of Mr. Chris Hedges. They will be playing Freedom Finale.
here's a quote on commitment and sacrifice. Our flag does not fly because the wind moves it. It flies with the last breath of each soldier that died protecting. Jesse Meek is a 1997 graduate of Campbell County High School. He joined the Army in the summer of 1996 between his junior and senior years of high school. He went on to serve at two separate duty stations, the first in Fort Richardson, Alaska, where he served as a paratrooper in the 501st Parachute Infantry Regiment. His second duty was as a scout slash sniper in the No Slack Battalion of the 101st Airborne Division at Fort Campbell, Kentucky. In 2003, Jesse deployed to Iraq in support of Operation Iraqi Freedom with the 101st Airborne Division, but his deployment was cut short by an injury five months in. He separated from active duty in 2004 as a corporal and served in the Army Reserves until 2008. His personal awards include the coveted Ranger tag with the tie jump. Jesse holds a Bachelor of Science in Accounting from Northern Kentucky University, thanks to the GI Bill, and an MBA from Thomas More University. He is currently a Senior Financial Analyst at the CBG Airport Authority. When Jesse is not coaching baseball or caddying for his sons, August and Atticus, he and his wife, Melissa, enjoy sitting on the beach, soaking up the sun. Jesse is an active volunteer with local nonprofits, including the Barracks Project and New Day Ranch, and also serves as the Director of Security at his church, Next Chapter Church, in Taylorville, Kentucky. Please join me in welcoming Corporal Jesse Miak. I just love my friend Chris when you were reading that, so it's super embarrassing to write something. Uh, good morning, Cougars, and happy Veterans Day. Uh, first, I want to send a special thank you to uh, your teacher here, Jonathan Moore and Laura Mosqueda, uh, for putting together this program and for inviting me here today uh, to speak to you. Um, secondly, I want to thank all of you for being here in attendance. And I recognize you may not have had a choice in that, but it still means a ton to me. Um, and you'll understand more uh, as, as I get through this, why, why it means so much to me. Um, before I go on, I want to take a moment um, to recognize uh, this special group of people uh, that I have behind me today. So uh, if, if I could, uh, could I have anyone serve in the Marine Corps either stand or raise your hand? Thank you, Marines. Anybody that served in the Navy, please stand or raise your hand. Thank you, sailors. Could anyone that served in the Army please stand or raise your hand? Thank you, sailors. Could anyone that served in the Coast Guard?
When a recruit takes the oath of enlistment, they figuratively sign a blank check payable to the United States of America, with the maximum amount of that check being their life. None of us want to die in service, although many of us have come close, but we're willing to. I came close. I'm only here but by the grace of God's giant hand being there on the desert floor of northern Iraq to catch me, and for the men I serve beside who call my brothers, like this gentleman in the front row, Chris Love. When I was 17 years old, I raised my right hand and swore to defend the Constitution of the United States of America. That was 26 years ago. So yes, I'm old. But it feels just like yesterday. Uh, during my time in service, I was blessed to have met some of the best friends I could have asked for. Uh, many of them I'm still friends with today and able to keep up with uh, thanks to social media. That is the only positive thing I will say about social media. In the service, I did all sorts of crazy things, like fly 18 hours from Anchorage, Alaska, uh, don a parachute in flight, and then jump into the country of Thailand with the Thai Rangers. Uh, and in 2002, uh, I was selected from my unit to go to Ranger School, and after I graduated, I was certain I would make it a career. However, on June 3rd, 2003, I fell 45 feet out of a Black Hawk helicopter during a mission in northern Iraq. Spent the next 24 hours in a combat support hospital. I was then flown to Lawn School, Germany to receive care enough to stabilize me, uh, to then fly me back to the United States for Walter Reed Hospital in Washington, D.C. About 120 hours or so after I fell out of that helicopter, I, lay, I was laying in a hospital bed, wondering what the hell I was gonna do. I had a morphine drip in my neck, fractured pelvis, and no hope. I had surgery that day to install a plate and two screws to fix my pelvis, and a few days later my physical therapy started. It was a grueling process, one that I despised. On um, those days when the therapist would come to get me, I would pretend to be asleep. So he would leave for a little while and then sneak back in into my room so I couldn't fake it again. And he would wheel me down the hallway to what I called my torture chamber. Uh, one day, after likely growing exasperated with my self-pity, uh, he just came in and sat down in the chair in my hospital room and just waited for me to wake up. Played along a little bit, uh, but eventually I gave and we had a conversation that drives me to this day. He asked if I ever wanted to walk again. He asked if I wanted to do anything with my life, to which I answered yes. Uh, he asked me how I thought I was going to do that if I didn't put any effort towards my recovery. He reminded me that just a few hours ago, short days ago, uh, that the left side of my pelvis, basically part of the support structure of your skeleton, had been completely shattered. He promised me that if I put in the work with him, I would come back better than I was before. He was mostly right. Can't run six minute miles anymore, but I am training for the Baton Memorial Death March, a full 26 mile marathon through the desert of White Sands, New Mexico with a 35 pound pack on my back while also training for the Buck 50 150 mile team race in April, while also training for the 25th anniversary of the Flying Pig Marathon in May. Now back to what I said before about the impact y'all had on me just by being here. See, because of my injury in Iraq, I suffered a traumatic brain injury, and I also suffered from post-traumatic stress disorder. What that word salad really means is that my brain doesn't necessarily function normally, whatever that is. Let me give you an example. Uh, when you and I are driving down the road and we see a piece of trash or some roadkill lying in the road, we experience that situation drastically differently. You just like to say it's minor inconvenience that you need to attempt to avoid. My screwed up brain immediately flashes back to Highway 1 in Iraq and fully believes there is a bomb in it and I instinctively start scanning the roadside for combatants as well as alternative routes of escape. Now at this point, you're probably thinking, why did they let this crazy person come up here and tell war stories? But I promise you there's some meat to this, and that's really why I'm here. Because your generation truly has the potential to make so much more of an impact than mine has and those before us. The reason I just told you about my PTSD and my TBI is to say this. The fact that I'm talking about this is something very new to me. In the military, we are taught to show no weakness, admit no weakness, and never falter. And that is the correct attitude when you're training for combat. 
However, it's the absolute worst mindset when you're back living in the civilian world. And this message is not just for veterans returning from combat or military service. It's for all of us. The reason I say that y'all have so much more potential to make change is because we're finally living in a time, as a society, mostly, we've begun to come out of the shadows and talk about mental health, not as a stigma, but as something that many of us struggle with daily. For those of you who are sports fans, heck, even those of you who are not, I encourage you to seek out Jay Glazer's new book, Unbreakable. I finished it recently on the plane back from Colorado last week. So anyone that comes to see me after this event, the first person I give this to, this is my copy. But Jay talks about the impact he and his Unbreakable team have had on soldiers and athletes and others, simply by being a decent human being to each other. So in closing, here's my challenge to you. Find your unbreakable team. Now stop right now for a second, and I want you to look to the person on your left and the person on your right. This might be a good place to start your team. If you can't find one, that's not the right place. Make one. This team is your go-to whenever you're struggling with anything, because the worst thing you can do is struggle alone. We lose too many people every day who struggle alone. Now, do you remember a little bit ago when I said it was old? Well, as an old person, it's a requirement that whenever you speak to anyone younger than you, you impart words of wisdom on them. So here you go. Be kind to each other. Use social media for good. Don't compare yourselves to anyone or anything. You are awesome and badass just the way you are. Be you whatever you are. Thank you, God bless you, and happy Veterans Day.
recognized for their sacrifices and that are made for our country. Their service is often overlooked or expected. That is why we feel it is important for every one of our veterans and military guests to get the opportunity to be recognized individually. We would now like for each of our honored guests to share with us their name, the branch of military they served in or continue to serve in, the years they have served, and if they have a connection to one of our Connor High School students to state who they are representing. Please hold your applause till the end.
H. P. Hendrick, United States Army, 67 through 70, Vietnam. I'm representing Ms. Pop, uh, uh, Jeff Hendrick, and Kenzie Hendrick. Richard Vance, Sergeant, U.S. Army, served from 72 and 73. I'm here on behalf of Ashley Kimball. If you wave your hand, I'll know where you're at.
Connor High School students and staff would like to sincerely thank our honored guests for being here and for being our heroes. Without our military personnel, we would not have the lives we enjoy today. Thank you all for coming and joining us in what we hope will be an annual event for you. If we have our honored guests stay in the seating area for a few minutes to take a group picture, that would be appreciated. As you wait, please feel free to enjoy some homemade cookies you will find in your bag, made especially by our very own culinary skills class. Thank you, and classes are now dismissed for second.